All right, I'm here today with Maureen. Let's say hello. <laughs> Recent addition to Spain. Um, I watched your video the other day where you mentioned about your parents in working hard, and mm. and I had to say my parents like up till the, they work all their life for a certain goal, yes. and then they they miss it, yes. you know. And um, I seen on your video you're very focused on a similar way I am that. Mm. You know, it's better to make the move now, and and get the most out of life. You know, it's. Uh... I think it's important. Um, I mean, age-wise, as I said, I'm sixty now. Mm. I haven't got used to being sixty, and all of a sudden it's like sixty-one's just round the corner, and it's like you kind of reflect on what you've done, things that you've dreamed of doing and haven't pursued, and it's really kind of. A wow moment I, I have to do something here and now I don't want to end up in a position that my parents and many other people are in where they've worked towards a goal and never reached it because ill health something comes up and just knocks you off course so take a leap of faith and just jump yeah I think that's, that's very important because a lot of people are always going there and then they get knocked back yeah. and they delay it and then there's something else yeah. Yeah, and I, I think that's the important thing yeah. Because once you make that decision to do it, you've committed to it. And yeah, I mean, it took a few years. Then I started watching a um, YouTube channel. Of course, your channel came up. Um, you were talking about different aspects of um, life in Spain. And I thought, you know what? He's done it. A lot of other people have done it. I need to get out there. And so when I came across to La Mata and I met April, we kind of hit it off. She introduced me to ladies of Spain and I met this group of women who are sort of in similar situations. We're, we're not all the same, you know, but we had this kind of community spirit, very supportive of each other. And I thought, wow, I, I want to be a part of this. This is really great. I mean, I have neighbours in the UK many of whom I don't talk to. Mm. We don't have that community there. Um, I used to sell Avon and do Herbalife and go and knock doors. And half the time, people wouldn't answer their door. No, they look through the window. Yeah. yeah. You know they're in, the lights are on, you can see movement. <laughs> and the TV down. And, you know, so there was no community spirit. So that was something that sort of drew me, um, it, it sort of made me want to commit fact that people were friendly they were open and as I said the sense of community amazing amazing yeah I do find a lot of people connect here quite easily as well mm, yeah because it, it's not I mean I, I mean the Philippines is very good at connecting you just have to sit on the bus and people start talking to mm, you mm. but in the, in the UK I think you get a bit worried about being attacked or something when you're anywhere in public okay I mean this has a lot to do with it mobile phones you know you you get um, you can I have see, it in your pocket yeah, and yeah. you can um, uh, hands free yeah so you see someone on the road, years ago, you see someone on the road having a chat to themselves, you think, oh, that person's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and nowadays, you know, everyone's sort of hands-free and doing things, you don't know who to approach. Um, when I uh, went on a bus to Torideca, is yeah. that how you pronounce it? Um, a lady sat next to me, and she's like, um, hola, buenos dias, and it's like, oh, oh, English. <laughs> yeah, hang <laughs> on a minute. <laughs> yeah, and... Um, and I'm sort of like, oh, no hablo español. She goes, oh, don't worry, you know. Hola, hello, we all say it, you know, just say hello. We <laughs> greet her, and yeah. I thought, oh, that's nice. And I have had people walk past me in the matter and just greet me. Yeah, yeah, yeah they, you don't people know just them. do, yeah. I don't know them, and, and that was just, I don't know, it just made you feel warm and welcome and it makes you feel you know like you exist you're there <laughs> yeah. you've noticed yeah. Yeah. yeah you don't have to you know like oh i'm like lurking in the corner yeah like people noticed you and yeah. they will acknowledge you yeah that's the thing and yeah it just opens up your spirit as well you feel yes but but also you've got that instant connection because yeah. if you want to carry other conversation yeah. it's there yeah it's definitely a, where in the uk i find a lot of the time people don't want to talk to anybody or they feel i suppose there's a lot of negativity because of things that have happened out there everyone's scared 
you don't know, you know, you'll approach someone, you'll be quite nice, um, but, but you don't know what reaction you're going to get. It's like weeks. my neighbour um, upstairs, she has a child, the child bang, 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 you know, mm. and I went up and I knocked on the door, I was polite, and I, uh, she didn't answer, uh, she didn't open the door, she just said, ah, who is it, what do you want? I said, oh, I'm your neighbour from downstairs. I said, can you please stop the child running because yeah. it's directly over my bedroom. I'm trying to sleep. Oh, okay, okay, go away, go away. <laughs> and I thought, what? <laughs> and I'm thinking, you don't talk to your neighbour. We may need each other one day, mm, you yeah. know. Anyway, a few weeks later, it happened again. I went up and I said, you know, please, it's your neighbour. And immediately again, you know, she started shouting and then she started swearing at me. Yeah. It's... And then she opened the door and she was like an um, Eritrean, Somalian lady. Mm. And I was shocked. I thought, you know, um, I have friends from the African continent mm. and their behaviour isn't like that. I was really shocked. So I don't know what situation she came from, but the language she was using... It, it, it was it was disgusting so like I say you never know what you're gonna get yeah I mean I worked I worked in social housing for years um, as a surveyor so mm -hmm. I used to go around and fit people's kitchens and stuff mm -hmm. so everybody's welcoming to you <laughs> because you're the one that signs yeah. off the check yeah. but like you mentioned there were Somalians mm -hmm. I mean I did Bloomsbury estate in Birmingham mm -hmm. and Although there was local businesses having issues with Somalians, mm. generally, I found the people quite polite. Yeah. Yeah, because cause they're, I mean, they're, it was quite funny when I went round to this one woman's house, because she had a problem with her door, but she then was then say, oh yeah, I'm, I'm here, and I'm, you know, I come from Germany, you know, she... And then she's getting her passport and stuff for me. It's like, I don't, <laughs> I don't want it now. It's like, I'm just here to see if you, you yeah. need a new door. Or yeah. Um, but yeah, and I think some of the barriers are sort of heightened up in the UK with the media. Mm -hmm. Because one of the things I noticed about the local papers in here, although they have a lot of politics in it, yeah. there's a lot of positive stories as well. Mm -hmm. You know, because you don't really see that in the UK press. Well, no. I mean, it's like they, um, they've given uh, the British in Spain a, a bad name, haven't they? Well, they've been selective on the British. They, well, they? yes, and that's what I'm saying. I've come here, I've met the British who live here, and they're all very friendly. Mm. Some of them are working harder than they did in the UK. Yeah. You know, but they do it with a smile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 They're all, they've all been welcoming, all been very friendly. So, um, as you say, the press do tend to twist things a bit. Well, I, I watched, uh, I think it was Channel 4 did a, one on the, the Brexit stuff. Yeah. And the ones they selected were like people that voted for Brexit that live here. And, all of it. and you're thinking, how hard did they work to select these people? Because they must have had a load of people that say, I'll be happy to be on there. And they go, mm. no, they're too positive. No, they're <laughs> 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 you know, they didn't like yeah. sort of... Uh, but also, I noticed nearly all of them were retired, mm. or I don't think there was anybody that wasn't retired. Yeah. So when they're talking about Brits in Spain, it was very sele selective, mm. even on the age group. Mm. Um, now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that the um, people of a certain age are going to be more pro-Brexit, mm. but I would say that they selected it specifically for yeah. a demographic that yeah. suited what they wanted to hear. Mm. And I think that's the problem, and this is what people, they asked me about the Brexit, and I was to say, I don't want to know about yeah. it. Because yeah. for me, um, the problems in the UK will never change, mm. because it's always blame somebody else. Yeah. You know, it's the EU, before the EU, it, mm. you know. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to, oh, I'm going to get in trouble for this. You have to look at Scotland, how Scotland blames Parliament, and Parliament blames the EU, and it's just a cycle. Nobody ever says, you know what, I'm going to fix it. Mm. It's always like, no, it's their fault. And it's, well, hang on, well, what have you done? You know, so what, what, what's, what's your view on Brexit, <laughs> by the way? Me? Yeah. I think European countries should be together. We should be a, a, a huge community. We keep supporting America. America is not part of the European mm. 
um, Union, we see shows from America. We're bombarded with American images and American views on world issues. But we... We we're, don't Europe, we're in other. Europe. Yeah, yeah we <laughs> yeah. don't help the other European countries. I, I don't agree with Brexit. I think we need to stay a part of it. Um, I honestly don't know what the outcome's going to be. I hope mm. it doesn't come to fruition. I really... Just well, I think we've got 20 years from sort of like that. <laughs> it has been ongoing for a while, but Farage and Boris, you know, and um, who was the other one? Michael Gove. You know, they were like the three witches around the cauldron, stirring mm. the pot. And um, then suddenly, you know, everyone's voted to, to, to leave. And they disappeared, didn't so they, they for did. a while? <laughs> They disappeared, uh, yeah. and then all of a sudden they're sort of coming out again and starting a little bit of stirring and putting themselves forward as leaders. You know, they want to take over, and it's wrong. They lied to the public in the first instance. Mm. They lied. They said the NHS is going to get so much money, and of course a lot of people, you know, voted because of that. Yeah, yeah, the and misinformation. Then, yeah, it, it, it's... I don't know, we say misleading, we try and sort of be sort of gentle about these things. It was blatant lies. Yeah, but politicians get away with it, but yeah. other people find yeah. themselves up in court yeah. for doing it. <laughs> <laughs> blatant lies, you know, so it's very sad um, the way things are manipulated, they're twisted, propaganda. Um, I mean, they say about people, you know, coming over, taking jobs. There are no jobs. There was a stage um, when I had to sign on and um, went to the job centre and they said, oh, you need to do this course, otherwise we're going to stop your job seekers. Yeah. And um, I, I had to go along with it. And as soon as I got there, the lady that was running this training thing, she said, oh, um, oh are you happy to be here? And I said, well, no, I don't appreciate being blackmailed into doing something. Mm -hmm. That I don't need to do because they had a lot of professional people there forcing them to do this silly course, yeah, which didn't lead to any. Um, and then they lie about the statistics and say, Oh, we've got people back into jobs, and yeah, like, yeah, because they put know? them on training to take them yeah. off the benefits system, yeah. and they go, Oh, look, the yeah, figures we, are down. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, my brother got stuck in that loop for about four years mm. because he, he does mainly manual work. Mm. And all he wanted was a forklift training course mm. because he could get a forklift mm. course. But they sent him on courses how to do a CV, how to, yes. uh, yeah, how, yeah. To, how to do a, um, a present, not a presentation, a um, what do you call it, interview, mm. uh, reading and writing courses. And at the same time, all he wanted was a forklift course. Yeah. And you think, oh, they don't, oh, yeah. and I know some people go, oh yeah, but that's, that'll be too expensive. Mm. You don't know how much these agencies and stuff charge for these courses. Well, yes, the trainers themselves, they get a decent wedge yeah. of money. Yeah, and it, but he also has a f few times they would book him into the course and then the job centre would book him an interview at the same time as well. And then that had to go to tribunal because the job centre had done it on purpose. Oh, no. And they did it about three times and they won every tribunal. Mm. But the point is, it wasn't a case of he didn't want to work. Mm. He just couldn't find work that mm. he could do. Mm. And I think that is one of the problems in the UK. I think the, there's a lot of, because of the legislation and everything, there's a lot of jobs that have simply just disappeared. Mm. You know, with the, you know, cause the, you know the, the minimum wage is too high for a lot of them. And at the same time, a lot of the work um, the productivity has sort of been mechanised or gone elsewhere. Mm. But at the same time, there's no sort of recognition that the environment's changing. Yeah. And looking at going, well, there's no point teaching somebody to be a welder if we've got 5,000 welders that can't find work. We, they need to train in IT or they need to do... I mean, that's one of the things I will say about the UK. There's a shortage of engineers all the time. Mm, yeah. But the, but the thing is, will they give you free education in engineering? I don't think so. <laughs> that's a funny thing. And yeah, it's, a, it's a, one of those skills in demand. Mm. Um, but the wages haven't really gone up in yeah. 15, 18 yeah. years, probably. Yeah. Um, but anyway, back to Spain. <laughs> yeah, back to Spain. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. 
I mean, I got my NIE, um, as you know, a couple of days ago, thanks to April. <laughs> she didn't actually accompany me there, but she did all the background work. She, she made sure the paperwork was in order. Um, so thank you so much, April. No, I really, no. It went smoothly. I've heard some horror stories where people have said, you know, they've had to come away because they didn't have this, that and the yeah. other. But um, it just went so smoothly. You know, you kind of anticipate because yeah. you hear this negatively, you think, yeah. oh, God, you know. But what? how are the policemen in Elgin? Were they, they were chill? Fine. chill. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they were very chilled. Just um, uh, it just ran smoothly. They called out your name. You went up. Um, I had Rosario with me, who obviously interpreted because mm. um, I don't speak the lingo. And, um, yeah, it went smoothly. I think that's down to the paperwork, not necessarily because he was there. So thank as you. As long as it's complete, yeah. then I'm really, yeah. you know. Because yeah. yeah. it's the same with the driving license, there wasn't an issue yeah. because the paperwork's in order and it's all yeah. there. Yeah. They don't even need to speak to you. That's yeah. what I keep saying to people and they go, well, I'll, I'll pay for a lawyer, I'll pay for this. Yeah. And I'm like, that literally, you mm. just need to go, okay, print off what forms I need. Have I got this one? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Put yeah. them in and... In a little folder, so it's all neat and tidy for mm. them, and they just go like that. I want this one, and they just yeah. they just yeah. sit there and yeah. do it for you, yeah. and then they are out the door. Because mm. I know here at the foreigners' office, they do get a bit irritable sometimes, but a lot of that is caused by people going in there without the right okay. paperwork and mm. um, shouting at them and mm. stuff. Mm. Because quite simply, be there all day, mm. and people turn up and go, "I don't know what I need." <laughs> it's like you get fed up by it, hey. it? Yeah. <laughs> and you go. There's a sign on the, you know, because yeah. there's a big note. That's our thing. There is notice boards around. Mm. So if you look on the notice boards, it will tell you what mm. things you need. But yeah. Also with the NIE, um, it's different now. It doesn't last three months. They've scrapped that, haven't they? So it lasts a bit no, longer. No, I've got on those. Is it? Like, no, no, they the, the NIE, is, the NIE yeah. is good for three months, so the paper. Yeah, but it's permanent but, anyway. Um, literally, it's just like saying it's good for three months. Mm. But they... The number itself is it's forever. Permanent. Yeah. yeah. No, you just need to renew or yeah. have a fresh copy, unless you know needed like legally for some buying some property and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Mainly they just after the number read. Yeah, because once they got the number, they that's your that yeah. ties you to everything. Your yeah. tax codes for everything. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're buying a car, anything is they use it. Yeah. So. Also, the properties I have said. If you see a property online and it looks fantastic, you've got to come and physically be there to view it. Because mm -hmm. I've seen some fantastic places, but unfortunately, you know, it's in the middle of wasteland. <laughs> yeah, yeah, They shrubbery. don't show that. <laughs> <laughs> you got tumbleweed rolling past. <laughs> um, and you guys came with me to view that property. Yeah. I mean, the hill... And then we turned that corner and that road, it was like, no, we're not going up yeah. there. Um, it was quite hilly. Um, I have seen one property that I fell in love with. It's just the location, um, not good. And the price, I think it was a bit too high. Mm. But um, overall, I mean, there are some beautiful places here. I'm sure there's as well. one waiting for you. There's one waiting for me. Yeah. I just haven't found it yet. <laughs> um, another thing I need to do is get my teeth sorted. Yeah. Um, it's in a bad way. I need an appointment ASAP. So I now I've got my NIE. Could I take that with me or my little card? My uh, Hyatt? The EHG. European, European Health Insurance yeah. Card. Yeah, yeah. That, the EHIC should be for like um, medical emergencies and that sort of stuff. I know a lot of people use it as their permanent health card. Oh. Um, but they are starting to clamp down on that. Okay. Okay. I think yeah. it's only good for three months. It is. It's and supposed to be, and I've seen people traveling use traveling to other EU years. countries. Yeah. Okay. yeah, it's a tourism card. Yeah. Um, so with that, yeah, I'm not sure they do the dental treatment, but the doctor mm -hmm. might be able to. But mm -hmm. the the yeah, I mean, if you go to a salute, you can have the, mm -hmm. a clinic and see, but I'm, they might just refer you to a dentist anyway because mm -hmm. I'm not sure they. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I don't know if they do dental because I think in the Spanish system I don't think they get free dental care either. Yeah. So because the whole point of these uh, EHIC cards is you get the same level of care that the locals would get. So it, 
it may not be free dental care mm. but if you go to the saloons the saloons um, like the one down here are they, they should take the EHIC card right. but uh, yeah because mainly like I said for tourists within Europe well I'm a tourist at the moment. well you're a tourist at the moment because <laughs> they accept it for the well yeah. they do accept it for the first three months anyway yeah. Oh, yeah. okay yeah. okay that's good to know that's good to know all right um, yeah but for dental care most people I've asked you know mm. I know um, they go private because the waiting list on the local one is just miles and a miles. Year. Yeah. Yeah. But but months. Yeah. yeah. Really? If you wow. get some, like you, if you want some emergency, or if mm. you have an insurance and if it's covered in the same company or, you know, mm. you can maybe have it done here. Yeah. Maybe cheaper. <laughs> well, yeah, because the thing is, if you pay for a initial meeting, that's going to be, what, 40 euros? Yeah, and then you any work is going to be depending on what they need to do. Yeah. So I mean, a, an extraction is about forty euros, isn't it? Or was it sixty? Um, depends <laughs> if it's a root canal or just you know, but mainly it's the last time I know it was twenty one. Cause no, that's oops, on hours though. That's half. Yeah, twenty one regular, but oops had for about just thirteen euros. Yeah, because he. So the thing is, that's where you go way up. Is it worth getting an insurance first and then going? Mm -hmm. Because then you're going to pay half price on all of it. Because mm. um, you can get a full, fully comprehensive type one where you don't pay anything. But I mean, I find with dental work, it's not too bad to go half 50 50. You yeah, because they're not going to do it all in one go anyway. So, because like when we had Ubi. <laughs> Yeah, but um, he had an assessment. Yeah, it would cost nearly a thousand euros for all the you know repairs, repairs. the wow. space wow. brackets and <laughs> stuff. But it's not gonna happen all in one sitting. Yeah. It, it will. Then you know you have to visit there like every three months, and so the, it's the more like yeah. Yeah. Okay. So and then as we calculated with the um, insurance, it it appears that we can save half. Okay. But I think, but so. I think they have a better rate than we got anyway. I think they were even cheaper than ours. Because I think the I'm sure that the extraction was forty euros, and then what, like you say maybe it was twenty one or and then they got thirteen, which means it was cheaper. Or was it because an adult and a kid? I don't know. Yeah. So the the insurance might might work out cheaper option. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I need to look into that because I need some work done ASAP. Yeah. I mean, if you need. If it's just an extraction or something, mm. then you may not it may not be worth getting insurance. Mm. But I mean, for insurance, what was it about seven, eight, seven ninety a month? Seven euros ninety a month yeah. per person. Oh, that's uh, sweet, okay. And then the thing is, it's not just that you get all the half price, but you'll get like dental cleaning. What else do you get? Because you you have the voucher. Oh uh, no, the voucher was one time. But um, if you have the insurance, it's you know like. Every year you have a free cleaning service, every six months or something. Yeah, so even the cleaning service may actually pay yeah. pay for the rest of it anyway, just doing that. So yeah, yeah. for fillings and other, you know, like extraction and stuff, you get half, half price. Okay. So it all depends how much work you need. That's yeah. the big question. Yeah, I'm just gonna say I came here today um, because I needed remote access to my computer. Um, I tried several times. <laughs> And I'm quite competent, so I think. <laughs> um, I couldn't do it, and Matt kindly offered to have a look, and he's managed to sort it out, so I now have remote access. <laughs> and I can take myself forward now and um, do some other bits of work. So thank you so much, Matt. You're welcome on that one. Thank you so much. Um, I knew we'd do it. <laughs> anyway, um, I've got to go now. Um, the guys are waiting for yeah. me but yeah. thank you so much for welcoming me You're to your home welcome. <laughs> and for helping me I, I'm so relieved you, you do not know how relieved I am to get that sorted out so yeah that's because yeah. the thing is now you set up for remote working yeah. which is another thing that I've talked about on the channel as well mm. is actually finding some remote work and mm. doing stuff from here because one of the problems with work on the coast is most of the work is bar work restaurant Gosh, work not and me, not me. Yeah. too old for all that 
but, <laughs> standing up all day. Yeah. <laughs> but, but the funny thing is, there's a lot of remote work about. It's just mm. getting companies to let you do it. Yeah. You know, because yeah. the, there's a, I know in the UK there's a lot of obsession around being in the office. And it's, uh, I think that's changing, you know, because they can't afford to keep the offices going. No, no. But like, Rentals and things for an office. Spaces, yeah. It, it's terrible. Because I think my desk in when I was the office based desk I think it was probably about four hundred and fifty pounds a week just for the desk to be sat in an office. Mm. And I didn't go I went I mean it's like my boss I met him twice, wasn't it? Mm. In whatever however many years. Because the point is we we work everywhere but at the same time there is no need to be in the office. Mm. I mean then you've got the expense of getting to the office and yes, whatever. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, that, this is the thing, when you're living in Spain, you've got cheaper cost of living. Yeah. You haven't got the commute, and they haven't got the cost on the business or the commute. Because, I mean, this is yeah. one of the problems I have with the businesses that I'm associated with in the UK at the moment. Even, like, for a meeting, mm. you're talking 80, 80 pounds on the train for the day. And, you, and yet you go in there for one hour mm. just to discuss something <laughs> mm. and you're sitting there going but that doesn't make any sense mm. but there's but they, so yeah. you're more productive working at home well the other people I work with is that the same travel time yes cut yeah because yeah, you and the other thing is because you most of this stuff now the internet's fast enough mm. you've got the telephone communications fast enough mm. and it's global now where before it used to cost what a pound a minute to call America mm -hmm. Whatever, it's now a lot of time completely free yes. of using things like <laughs> Skype. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I do think remote working is one of the big options here uh, for living in Spain because mm. obviously here on the coast, the cost of living is pretty cheap. Mm. So as long as you can get a reasonable amount of work coming in, I think there's a good steady cash flow for a lot of people. Which you can um, sit by the pool and yeah. Sip your sangria. Yes. No, working <laughs> in pleasure. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> or sitting on the balcony where you're at the moment. Yeah, yeah. definitely, definitely. Anyway, guys, thank you so much. You, you've been amazing. <laughs> thank you for all the help with the NIE. No I was problem. really worried about that, but thank you. Anyway, ciao. Ciao. <laughs>